Hello, hello, hello. Hey Akim, how, hey Kate, how's it going? Um, could you give me a feedback if the music is too loud or too quiet? That would be awesome. Nice. That's good. Get the art stuff going. You don't hear any music. Okay, then it's fine. Last time it was just like my voice was way too quiet and the music was way too loud. <laughs> all right. Um, I hope you all had a good half week, a good week since the last stream. Um, tonight it's gonna to be a, again a draw along or draw draw with me or how you want to call it. Um, it's going to be a very chill stream tonight. Um, yeah, the my 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 intention is to draw some more masters and maybe do some portraits. Um, it really depends on my mood. I have spent a lot of uh, time drawing tonight at work um, or today. So um, yeah, I'm a bit unsure, but it's it's actually doesn't really matter. I think it's more about the mood. But I'm pretty good. I hope you all are very well as as well. And um, yeah. I hope we're gonna have a fun stream tonight. Hey Anikat, welcome to stream. Hey Naveen, how's it going? Hey Hannah, we haven't we haven't read quite a while. How's everyone doing? My week was pretty good, very intense to be honest. Um, a lot of work. I have a lot to do at work. But I also um, have a side project at the moment and also producing more YouTube videos about different stuff um, like planning the or actually I wrote the script already for the for the Q&A video and I already wrote a script for the um, for the money episode and um, there is actually a lot of stuff I need to film and produce and yeah. And my best friend actually got his wedding on Saturday. So I also had to get to, to buy a lot of stuff for that and to, to organize a lot of stuff for myself. So yeah, it was very busy, but I'm great. Just a normal hassle, I would say. <laughs> Cool. How busy are you with your classes, Hannah? How was your week, Kate? All right. Also, I, um, I basically flattened my my laptop last weekend, so I deleted the whole system because I had a lot of trouble, um, a lot of GPU spikes on the last streams, a lot of technical issues, um, and I had some contact with, with Dell support, and one of the guys told me to um, just reboot the whole system, and it took me really the whole weekend to reboot everything. Um, now I also have a new Photoshop version because obviously Photoshop, uh, Adobe doesn't allow to install um, install older versions, which is kind of shitty, but yeah, I guess that's just how it is. Um, yeah, and, uh, and it's weird because it's basically the same program, but the version feels so different than the other one I had before. Before I had 20 and now I have 21. So it's, it's kind of weird. And also like all the changes you have to do when you reinstall it, um, that's really annoying. And also like I had to do all my shortcuts again, all my buttons and all the brushes and everything. So yeah, 
that was quite quite annoying. Slow sounds good. Um, my tux gonna be green. Yeah, I also um, turn down the turn down the uh, the update function on Adobe, so that basically I don't. Uh, make an update on mistake. I had this situation once. <laughs> I, I got in, into work in the morning. I was pretty good in the mood and then um, it made an automatic update and everything w was messed up and I had a deadline. And that just takes all the time away. It's so freaking annoying. All right, let's do some stuff with some simple stuff here. I wonder if I'm gonna have some legs or some GPU issues tonight because I haven't tested yet. I had no chance obviously because we we didn't made any stream. Um, but so far like working and everything goes well. And usually I didn't have any problems with working with the laptop, but everything which takes too much too much energy from the from the uh, from the graphic card it's that just like yeah how are you also all doing how was the week how is the mood In Berlin, they started to change regulations also for COVID. So I'm very excited about Friday and Friday they're going to open the gym. I'm, I'm so excited for that. I definitely want to go on Friday, but I'm, I'm not sure how it works. If if you need a, a special a special appointment for it and if I'm going to get an appointment on Friday, but I really want to go. Um, yeah, I was so excited yesterday when I read that, that I just needed to work out at home uh, until midnight. It was really funny. Also, big thanks for all the people who sent me messages on Instagram, on the My Story youtube episode i really appreciate all your guys and girls kind words on that um i i was very surprised about the positive response that people would actually be motivated by that or could take something out of that because i was really unsure about the whole episode if that would be actually a thing to talk about but yeah maybe that was just my perception of that And it feel like it was interesting for some people. <laughs> yes, Hakim, it's going to be super saturated. <laughs> it's 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 go it's going to be like I'm going to be like a like a, what's it was it the the Irish the Irish um, goblin with a with a pot of gold that ki that kind of green. Hey Roducci, welcome to the stream. How are you doing, man? Um, that's Mikkel. No, that's um, that's Da Vinci. That's one. Uh, yeah, that drawing is out of Da Vinci sketch sketchbook. There are different books where you have a lot of um, drawings from Da Vinci, and I just love them to study because he also has a lot of like. You see that he tries a lot, so um, the anatomy at so in some areas is not like. Perfect. I mean, it's obviously very, very good, but there's also a lot of stuff where he tried stuff. The leg became too long, or the, the like, just the chest comes out too much. And um, but it's very interesting just to to analyze that and to see what he tried. Uh, 
Oh, nice, Kate. Hey, Mira, welcome to the stream. How was your day? Are you drawing hands or faces or work on your illustration? Yeah, probably. I probably need to have a negative test, but that's no problem. I have a test station right in front of my house. Hakim, I would never steal the show. Never, ever. It's also my best friend's uh, wedding, so... I will not... Would I wouldn't have the audacity to do that. But I'm very excited and happy for him. Yeah, that's that's a real gluteus, Maximus. I agree, Navin. Yeah, uh, Ruducci da, da, da Vinci was really freaking good in his drawings. He was also he was when when I look at, at his drawings, it feels more like um, like drawing like a doctor and less like someone who tried to illustrate. You know, you could see that he was really analyzing anatomy, the human figure. Yeah, he had this crazy, this crazy way of analyzing the stuff. And I think his mind was just um, so hungry of knowledge. When you look at all the stuff he did. It's just crazy. It's also so nice to just draw some anatomy at work I only do environment so it's a it's cool to step out of that for time to time also I feel like I don't like the time windows I have they become smaller and smaller somehow and I really start to I need to decide if I either produce a YouTube video or if I um, take some time for my project Also, I don't want to let down my mentees, so there's a lot of stuff. But that's also why I feel it's important that we have the weekly streams. So we can just have a chat and talk a little bit about stuff and I know how you're all doing. I believe that's very important. I also like that more people are engaging in the community like talking about stuff, exchanging, that's very important. And I feel like most of the people really try to get better and it's just so much helpful if people are exchanging experience and knowledge and everything. Um, What's the best practice for self-taught uh, self artist to master anatomy? Hmm, I would say separate the whole human body. So if you, for example, take um, a Proko anatomy class, you're going to see that he separates everything first in uh, structure. So you start with the bones and everything. And then when you when it comes to the muscles, then you will just go one by one. So first neck muscle, then the back muscles, then uh, pecs and biceps, triceps, everything is separated. So if I would go back in time to learn anatomy with everything I know to today, I would just separate everything and then just really take a week to just draw legs or take a week to just draw hands. That's really how you get better because then you can just 
um, focus on one area and then you just um, assemble that stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true, uh, Mira. the The day was really, really nice. I agree on that, and felt really like summer. Ah, you work on the illustration interface. Nice. Oh, thanks. I will tell him. Yeah, hands are a little bit tricky. I totally would understand if you. If you're too tired also. Also like being tired is also something like knowing when it makes sense for you to, dr to draw or what to draw because you need to sp specifically focus on stuff. And if you become too tired to, to really get something. I always need to think about um, my buddy Alex Negrea who was one of the first well-known concept artist um, who really lived that um, who lived that study study life like he did a lot of studies and I think he got also well known on uh, conceptart.org about his studies and I remember when he told the story that he would get up at six in the morning doing studies but then realizing that he didn't really took something out of the study because he was just so tired and he just he basically just uh, was like a like a study machine. He was just like copying it, but not really taking something out of that. But I believe still, if you would copy something hundred times, you still unconsciously learn stuff. So here now, for example, like deciding if I do the same stuff he did with the leg or not. So I, I don't. I try to draw the leg a little bit shorter because it's very extreme here how da Vinci did it but what I like about this about the drawings is that you see the you still see the flow lines and they partially look very loose which just shows how important gesture is Oh, what's that? The stream is... Oh, the stream just opened on my phone. <laughs> no. I was wondering why my headset is having weird sounds, but I basically just have the the Bluetooth on. Right. <laughs> um, mostly... That's, that's actually a good question, Mira. Um, why you need to know about the bones when you draw anatomy. Um, you need to know about the bones because not only the bones are showing through, because if you want to draw anatomy correctly, you have a lot of overlaps. And in order to understand those overlaps, you need to understand the structure of the figure. So, for example, if you have something like the knee, um, so let's say, Where's that layer here? So let's say this one here. So you have the quad here going down. And then you have an overlap here and you have the kneecap coming out. And to understand how the knee is um, connected inside the leg, it's very important to know it when you draw the anatomy, also like correcting it or changing it, you need to understand the structure. It's the same like where the 
like the the bonus coming out. Like where where does it sit basically, you know? So you also get an understanding for the ratio of it. So you see if it's too close or too wide. And then also you will understand, for example, on arms, um, an arm can look very fast spaghetti-like. So if you if you draw it too loose and you don't understand, like let's say you give it a very flowy gesture line and you don't really understand how the the upper arm is connected to the lower arm. It will either look very flat or it can look very like like a too long cooked noodle, you know? So it's really important that you understand how everything is connected and where the certain parts you need to indicate are coming out like the elbow and how are the hands, for example, connected to the forearm. So where is that coming out? Um, and that's, that's going through the whole through the whole body. Yeah, floppy noodle. And the overall proportion is just important also. Like generally to, to see and understand. Because you will never get to a certain level in your anatomy if you don't understand the, the structure. And you see it also like when people go into stylized drawings, um, you can see if they don't have a clear understanding of anatomy. And anatomy is freaking hard. I mean, it's it's not easy. It's something that you can't easily like do. And also, we see mistakes very easily because we are observing and seeing people unconsciously day in day out. But. Um, I think there are also a lot of artists, a lot of comic book artists also who have a, have a have their own way of drawing anatomy and figure. And they also say that you don't need to know every muscle because they have a certain certain way of drawing that, but there's they still have that um, specific base understanding. Um, so I believe proportion is one of the biggest parts. And same goes to, to perspective, you know, like seeing how something which comes at you or goes away from you is converging in perspective is just absolutely important. And it's so easy to make it wrong as well, you know.
<laughs> All right. Questions, how tight do I want to draw that? It's interesting you don't see the hand on this drawing. I suppose the hand who's sh which is shown right there is not, it's not the right one. So let's just indicate it like this. What I really like about the drawing is that you can really see the flow of motion. Which is definitely something I want to remember for my own drawings. Also motion and movement is something that really helps to give your image a certain, um, certain interesting or makes it more interesting. actually made the arm not really coming at us it's more like going away from him so we can shift that a little bit Okay, let's flip that guy. Dun, 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 dun. All right, enjoy lurking, Cade. And welcome everyone else who joined the stream. So feel free not to, don't feel forced to, to chat or anything, just Chill, take a drink, whatever you like.
So when I do this process here, I also have this very painterly brush and I'm trying to I'm trying to separate first light and shadow. So I just look at the dark parts and the light parts. And what I want to observe is like the decision making on how Da Vinci um, decided on what he want to show in the light area and what to want to show in the, in the, in the dark area. But also um, it is something which is like the rhythm of core shadows on the soft muscle tissues, something you can see on the lower back from the figure or um, also on the glutes. And the process here is just um, taking this brush, this brush is a very big um, bristle brush, but it feels a little bit like drawing with chalk. Um, so I just try to work in now the big masses and then slowly um, erase stuff out or just add more stuff. And I just try to observe that. And it's really, it's it's not very hard for me. It's just really like purely observatory. Um, and it's a good start to do to do that. But it's also very interesting to keep things like that in mind when you come to the point that you're gonna lit your own figure some, someday, then it's very good if you have study stuff like that. And I just study that also because not only the anatomy and the way he drew feels interesting for me but also just it's just i just have a i don't know emotional i don't know um i get an impulse by looking at that drawing just do something which which basically makes me want to draw so i just take this as energy to draw to practice and practice is important, but also like the right practice is important, but sometimes it's also just doing something for you to satisfy the inner artist. Also, when you come to the point that you're, you're doing this as a job, you drawing and painting all day, which is amazing um, because even if you have a bad day, you still do something that you love doing but that can also like doing this as a job takes a lot of creative energy from you so it's in the beginning when i had my first studio job it was really really hard to come home and still have energy for drawing and i did did not draw anything i was just completely done after work so i'm um, after four years of doing that I feel like having more capacity but also if you do something for others all the time like drawing for other people on other projects not for your own you will start to feel the need of doing stuff for yourself that's why doing stuff like this is so beautiful just to do and not any intention of I don't know posting stuff or doing stuff for Instagram just for yourself because it's so easy to forget the the reason why you started drawing because you have fun doing that stuff. I don't know how's it for you, but just how I feel about that. Also, I remember when I um when I went to life drawing at college, that was really the best time, you know? Just completely focusing on one thing, forgetting everything else, all the projects in school, all the stress or anxiety about getting a job after college, all that stuff, you completely forget about that and you just fell into a hole of creativity, drawing. And you d really don't care about the, if the drawing becomes good or bad. It's just about doing it. That's really what it's all about. I also know already that even if I'm going to be 80, if I become that old, that I will do that all day. Maybe it's... 
Maybe it's not going to be a, a PC <laughs> when I'm 80 because either there's better technology or my eyes are dead. So I go for paper. I could actually imagine going completely traditional in re after retirement or something, just for fun. Enough digital. It's also what I loved about Mobius when he 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 did the opposite. He did so much traditional all his life, and when he um, started to do more, uh, when he started to do more. Uh, Digital, you could see the change in his work, but in, in, a, in a good way. Also, the teacher we had when we did live drawing was um, a pretty famous German sculptor. And he it was such a cool guy. He was so, so chill. And he never gave us like strict instructions. He never said like, yeah, the arm is this and this and this or your anatomy is wrong. He was just like, yeah, just feel the drawing. <laughs> Feel, have fun with it. Feel, feel, feel the motion. Um, and he, he had more a painterly approach. And he really, he was really a fan of good draftsmanship. And he also invited me once to his atelier, and I, I went, went there, and he had like so much amazing work, sculptures and everything. I wonder if he's actually still teaching the class. Still mapping out values, not really committing too much to stuff. I just also try to do as less stro strokes as possible. Also, it's something I've learned when I did the all the painting, painting all the portraits and everything in the past. Like when you don't focus on brush efi efficiency, you will really just render the stuff out and out and out. But then it's, if you not focus so much on that, you start to not be so conscious about your strokes. And it's actually really important to be conscious about that to get better in my opinion. But maybe that's just my personal observation. <laughs> I 
can actually start to smudge a little bit just to indicate form because we know form change equals value change that's something you would, should always keep in mind when you paint when the form is changing if it's turning away from the light source or turning towards the light source the values are changing whatever it is so that's why the like keep in mind form change equals value change if you save that in your brain um, it will become much easier for you to dissect values. It's also something you can learn in the book from Scott Robertson, How to Render. And he's also someone who preaches that a lot, so definitely can recommend that book. Also, um, the painting we did the, over the last couple of streams, I, I worked actually even more on that and I changed it a lot. Also got some good feedback from a colleague because how we made the painting was more as a demo and not so planned. That, that's why it felt a little bit like chaotic and I need to sort out certain stuff, certain areas. So I will work on that a little bit more and then maybe present that on either stream or maybe in a separate episode. Let's see. a little bit darker maybe let's go for another layer still being very careful not going too dark I want to I want that the drawing we do here feels a little bit more traditional at the end I love it how dark it becomes between the shoulder blades and the interesting shapes it's creating. be way easier to do that with the lasso tool and then to use maybe a gradient the gradient tool but um, I want to do that with the brush so I train also a little bit the fidelity of mine making strokes also I can recommend that doing that mm -hmm, mm -hmm.
So we can also start to add a little bit more darker value for core shadows. So um, basically where light gets terminated and becomes shadow. Oh, I'm sorry, I haven't read the chat. Uh, da, da, da. Which artist I would like to meet on a convention top three? So I, one of my all time favorites um, I already met, which was Feng Zhu. Um, because I always wanted to meet him and I met him in Paris on the iMac. I think it was, when was that, two years ago? That was pretty cool, like just giving giving him a handshake and just quickly tell him, telling him that um, that I found his videos and that it actually made me start my career. That was pretty cool. Um, I also met Finian McManus there. He was also he's also pretty cool. Maybe top three, and I've never met. The thing is, you know, the thing is like those really good artists, they get so idolized at some point. Um, but the problem for me is if I don't have something which I can talk about, you know, and obviously I could talk about art with them, but I don't know if I would like to do that. <laughs> so like, you know, um, I would be more interesting, interested in a per in the person rather than the artist so yeah i don't know it's it's kind of hard i would say maybe probably jamie jones because he's also not very you can't find so much about him on the on the web and that g gives him such a blank personality so that would be interesting jamie jones um Jamie Jones, who else? Mm. Well, it's really hard. Jamie Jones. Artist I would like to meet. Does it come across wrong if I don't want to <laughs> meet anyone? <laughs> um, no, I don't. I have to. Uh, sorry, I have to think about that a little bit more. Mm, someone who I would like to meet. Uh, I mean, okay, I would like to meet Steven. Um, Steven Zapata. I mean, we had calls and we had. Yeah, we had just calls yet, but we never met in person. So I would love to m maybe have a coffee with Steven or go out for sketching or something, just chill. Um, that would be nice, that would be cool. I really like Steven, he's a cool guy. So I would definitely would like to meet him. Um, hmm. Number three. I would like to meet. I would like to meet Mobius, but he's unfortunately he passed away, so that's kind of tricky. I believe Mobius was really an interesting person, interesting artist and human being. Maybe I maybe maybe later I come on number three. So far, like Jamie Jones and Steven Zapata, definitely. How's it? Who's it for you?
Hakim, who's it for you? Hey Mohammed, how's it going? Any tips on how prom how to promote your art? Um, oh yeah, I have a lot of tips on that. I actually wanted to make an YouTube episode on that, but I can I f I felt I made a lot of mistakes on promoting, which made me learn a lot. So I would definitely say like first of all see all the stuff so instagram twitter um linkedin like use all the channels first of all because like some people they just promote their stuff on instagram but that's actually not smart because first of all when you start your reach is very small so what you want is bringing people to instagram following you there so you have more followers to eventually also get more views and more likes on the next post then um, consistency if you want to grow Instagram I, I grew my Instagram the most when I posted every day which is something I don't do anymore because it just takes too much time away and like making art for Instagram is not the right intention it's something I don't like anymore I've done that on purpose just to um, get a bigger following of course but that's not that's that shouldn't be ever the intention to make art but anyways uh, that wasn't the question um the yeah so use all the channels use linkedin use facebook use artstation um and there are many ways to promote stuff there um like also youtube is also a promotion tool also like of course you can you create some something like a video library um but it's also like promoting a lot. Like that's really, it's really a tool, you know? Um, so use all the channels, then be consistent, post every day, because all the algorithms are just pushing your work if you post every day. That's very simple to, to keep that in mind. And the more, the more, like there's also something which is like a, a ranking in, in on Instagram. I don't know if they changed that by now, but like last time I, I've done that, that it still was there. So it's basically the more consistent you are and the more often you post, the higher you get ranked into that system. So you also automatically get more reach. Um, and what also helps when it's specifically on Instagram, um, join challenges, join contest, because when people participate in a contest, and you're doing well, you're gonna get a lot of visibility. And yeah, and also like ask yourself, what's the purpose of promoting it? So if, you were, if your I, intention is to get a job, also promote it where people are looking, who look for people who wants to get hired, you know? So LinkedIn, definitely. A lot of people forget LinkedIn. LinkedIn is super, super crucial for our industry. Like all the recruiters, they're all on LinkedIn. So if you start out as an artist and you want to get a, you want to get a professional career and start with that, um, make an, make a good LinkedIn profile. Very important. Start also connecting with people. Um, make all the right connections. So when someone is going on your profile and they have the connection right to to your portfolio, it's absolutely crucial as well. Um, then also, yeah, consistency is very important. Um, quality, of course, like the problem with posting every day. And that's what I see also is that, yeah, the quality, you lose a lot of quality because how good can you make something in a day? You know, that's more or less, um, for artists, this habit is very toxic. So what I would do, I would make a lot of work, like maybe 50 pieces and then, or a certain amount of pieces and then post. Then So you can post basically 50 days in a row. And then when you're done, stop, stop it, produce another 50 pieces and then post again. Also for us, it's harder than other people because we have actually to produce stuff to post it rather than people who just took selfies from themselves in a bikini or I don't know, on a bicycle or 
training or whatever, that's way easier to post every day rather than a drawing. Because we also like artists are um, have anxiety. They are not sure if the work's good, if they want to show that. So um, yeah. And there are also a lot of people who who can do that. Like there's also a lot of um, Instagram profiles where people creating art on a daily basis and some of them make sketches they make really great sketches also which also works totally some people mix that some people do i don't know low po low quality poly stuff i don't know it's just completely mixed so really try to figure out what you want you know and i would not promote my art just to basically get more followers just to have more followers um, see it as a business model because that's really what it is Instagram is a business like also social media is more of a unfortunately of a business I mean we are lucky that we made some sort of community out of it so we can share knowledge um, that's also why my videos became more of informative videos because I just like making videos which are really helping you know, so, and also I feel like I, I, I feel obviously it's also very selfish, but I feel very good if I make a video, which actually helps someone. I don't want to do the 100th video on how to paint an eyeball or something. I feel that's, there's way better to do with my time and also like for other people. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. Oh, Jamie Jones is on Twitter now. Uh, I did not know that. Janos, can you can you uh, can you share the Twitter on the community, maybe, so I don't forget later on? That would be freaking awesome. What if you post every day? It considered spam by the algorithm. Oh, okay. How does it work then, Mira? What's the new, what's the new trick? Ah, Carla Ortiz. <laughs> Joe, Joe James and Alberto Miguero. Or Mi Milgo. I don't, I don't know Alberto Milgo. <laughs> Post bikini selfies with the sketch in the background. <laughs> I would either I, I would definitely get a couple reactions on that, but I don't know if anyone wants to see that. <laughs> I hope so. Um, no problem. Happy to help. Yeah, so post regular and have schedule. That's basically still the same. Man. Okay. Yeah, I mean it's the same on YouTube, but. Like also for me, I, I can't I can't produce a YouTube episode every week just because of er everything else. And I I try that also, but it also kills the quality again. So I rather do not post every week. And also for that we have also the live streams. So my hope is also that that um, YouTube will overcome Twitch in terms of streaming one day, because the base on YouTube, uh, like how everything is organized with the library and everything, is way better than Twitch. Twitch has just streaming, but if you remember Snapchat, Snapchat was was purely stories. And then Instagram took it over and then Snapchat basically died. And I believe that's gonna be, that can be possibly happen for Twitch. Even though the community is big on Twitch. And there are a lot of features still on Twitch with YouTube doesn't have, but like, I mean, the people working there are not stupid. So I have the feeling that that can possibly happen. 
but who knows. I'm still streaming on both. We can also, I could also start the affiliate program at Twitch already, but I don't want because then I can't stream simultaneously on YouTube and Facebook anymore. And yeah, it doesn't, I don't, I don't have the need to do that. So I rather don't become affiliate. Prefer long-term thinking there. It's so interesting when you t take a brush and just try to stay with one brush. <laughs> like, because for work, I, I mostly take the same brushes, which are very basic, like just soft round brush, hard round brush, and copper texture brushes. But when you draw something with just a particular brush all the time, it's interesting what you can create in terms of shapes, but also like how you more and more get the control over it. It's very interesting. I feel like this brush can also be a very nice drawing brush. If I do some more changes in the shape dynamics and maybe save that as a preset, could be pretty cool.
Dun, 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 dun. Oh, that's interesting. I, I, I didn't, I did not know that. But it seems like you analyze that a lot, Mira. Hey, Mulat, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? I hope you are a little bit better. Yeah, um, I totally understand the uh, the thing is with the reels. It's like also like how do you produce that on art? Yeah, I think you also only have fifteen seconds, so I don't really see how to do that. In yeah, I really don't see like how to how to how to make that also on a daily basis. I mean, what what do you want to do? You want to you want to record yourself every day and then you have to sped the footage up, have to edit it just for a post. That's a full-time job. Oh, I don't have the brush on. So this Photoshop version, S-U-C-K-S, a lot. I feel like the best Photoshop version was 16, I think. Oh, which one was that? CS6. I don't know, I don't remember, but there was this one Photoshop version which was so stable, it never crashed. Like brush was, the brush was perfect. You didn't have lag, you didn't have to turn off the Windows Ink stuff. You didn't have to change the the graphic, either, either the, all the settings you have to do these days just to have a smooth like brush. You didn't have to do all that jazz. Just because they had so much more of extra function, nobody's asking for. layers so that's that was the base block in here like more darker areas let's just merge them so I can smudge everything in between now Hey Trobmaster, welcome to the stream, thanks for the Twitch follow. Ah, oh, okay, that's interesting, did not know that. 
Yeah, but also if the reels could, would become stream clips, you have to edit all that. So imagine like how much time you spend. Like rather just doing a, a sketch or drawing and you just take a photo of that, hashtag it. Even that is already time. Like so much valuable lifetime. <laughs> Ah, okay, so if everyone wants to know more about promotion, then they should join the Discord Miras in. <laughs> I think I joined Artfall, but it was super laggy and not really working in the beginning. I think that's the, the, the one. Krita? What is Krita? No, I don't try that. Yeah, Photoshop is just, I don't know. Let's do not talk about Photoshop. It's a hate love. Muri, how are you doing? How is, how is work going? By the way, Mira, how is um, how is the illustration going? Could you prog progress a little bit? It's just so much fun. So satisfying.
So I'm also start to erase stuff out now. Just partially looking for light shapes. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's talk about it tomorrow, maybe. <laughs> yeah, if you're not sure about the hands, maybe just uh, leave them for tomorrow, Mila, and then just do a couple studies before. Oh, you had me on free, Murat. <laughs> DA DeviantArt? I never use DeviantArt. Never ever. I just used it to find reference, but I never was. I never. I think I had a DeviantArt account, but uh, when I started doing art and posting stuff, I was already like DeviantArt wasn't already a thing anymore, so I never never used it. Is it is it still a thing for people? Did not know that.
Dun, dun, dun. Good night, Naveen. Have a good night. Thanks for joining. So I also <clears throat> started now to use a little bit of a finer brush, like very thin, more like a drawing brush, to add those um, very dark little indications um, of contact shadows and overlaps, which just helps to push also the drawing a little bit more. And that's also something I've seen on a lot of old masters did. Basically just line work. To also make clear where is the overlap, what, what is in front. Someone who's doing that very well is, for example, Steven. Steven Zapata. The way he draws his anatomy is a very clean look. Really like that. I'm not sure if I should draw some hair here. And I don't want to copy that one on one, but to get good is the contraction of the back while running. I want to nail that at least. So we need to make this leg. This leg is just beautiful, beautifully made. So we have that saved in the brain.
Um, no, I usually don't watch stuff while working. Do you? I you, you watch that the one you sent it me twice already, and I haven't watched it yet. I just googled it. I actually forgot already the the naming of it. Some topia, but not dinotopia. It was something else, right? Um, yeah, usually I don't watch too much because I'm just. Like in terms of productivity, also um, for me, it's, it's I don't know how is it for for other people or for you, maybe. But um, I have a playlist of certain albums of music, and if I turn that on, it's like a switch in my head where I get into into a super tunnel focus, like a super focus area, and I can work through hours while just listening to that. And that actually started when I joined um, when I joined the studio. Um, when I joined my first studio, where I worked in commercials, because uh, I had such a tight deadlines. We had daily deadlines, so you came basically came to work, and then you had to get stuff ready for a pitch in, at night. So it was really really tight. So there was no time to waste, and it was very high stress. <clears throat> so I try to find a way to be super focused and uh, yeah and the combination of the album from Anderson Pack Malibu the album from the internet and uh, Tyler the creator flower boy those three albums in a loop I'm listening to and just over and over and over and for me it's like I know every song I know every hook every little thing and it just burned into my head but also when I turn the music on, like something is happening and I'm just starting working. So I'm mostly listening. Sometimes I'm also sit completely quiet. I just like silence. So I'm just sitting here completely in a silent room. And I mean, if the rare occasion is really that I watch something, Probably I listen to something I already watched, so I don't need to pay too much attention to that. So I'm really focusing on my work. Like I, it's otherwise it distracts me too much. And if I turn something on which is interesting, I'm not. I want to. I want to watch it. I want to listen to that. I want to absorb it. Like this unconscious absorbing stuff is not. I don't know. I've done that in the beginning, but not anymore. Too much, too many thoughts while working.
Hmm, mm, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> There's a subreddit? Mealtime videos? Alright, I'm gonna check that out. I'm gonna write that down on the post it. Oh, on a post it. What is actually time? I don't wanna lose myself in that. Oh, we are almost have two hours. Time flies by. Okay, let's let's speed up that thing here a little bit. I uh, I I at least need to finish this one and start another one. Or maybe do one from imagination to see what we saved. It's maybe a good idea. So what is definitely important again, what I mentioned, I want to nail the compression of the traps. That's just beautiful. Also practicing shading muscles. I love it that you can see the contour drawing strokes on the original image. It's just so pure.
Um, no, I never, I never really study new masters. Um, I did some Joseph Zubru Zubruvich, I think Zubruvich with the Z. Um, he's a watercolor artist and he does beautiful environment paintings. I studied him a lot. Um, but in general, I think, no, I'm not really, I don't know. It's just not, I, I don't know. It's just not so interesting for me. Uh, chat is also quiet. What is everyone doing? And also welcome everyone who joined. The stream. I see we became more people. Welcome everyone on Twitch. Welcome everyone on YouTube. So if you don't see all the questions written, it's because it's a multi-stream. So don't get confused. But I'm gonna see your message. Also, if you want to be a part of our art community, um, we have a Discord button on the banner on YouTube and also on Discord. Feel free to join. We are a friendly group of artists sharing experience and knowledge. And if you have questions or anything, just type it in the chat. Um, all right, let's at least do a little bit on the leg here i mean there's so much stuff i can I, I can render and paint on this things it's so much fun so i would love to really draw every little detail here but at some point we also need to make um the test of how much we saved so we also need to draw a pose from imagination, which is basically the, like just a double check of like how much we saved. So let's do a little bit more and then make it hard and try to do one from imagination while seeing how much we actually saved. By the way, um, if the music, if you can hear the music, please let me know. Or if not, if it's too quiet and you just hear me zooming, um, let me know as well because that's kind of weird. If you just hear me, then I turn the music a little bit louder. Hmm. I'm still not sure if I'm happy with the compression here. So what I really want to capture is the like squeezing it together, how he contracts the traps and the mid back while making sure that we have at least a okay um, visualization of that. Mm -hmm. 
So when you study something, you don't need to copy everything. It's just about what you want, what you want to see. Also, I would not advise to um, study the full figure if you're not confident enough with uh, certain parts. Because like human anatomy is so freaking complex and so hard also um, to do. Like every time I do it, I have to really get back into the groove and do three or two shitty drawings before I get get the mindset back of drawing anatomy and stuff. But that's why it's so important to practice that every day. Also practicing is so much fun. And if you have a day where practicing is not fun for you, don't worry about that. That's completely normal. And if you don't feel like drawing, don't draw. Just do something else. And if it takes a week or four weeks or 10 weeks, it doesn't matter. Because if you if you don't have energy and you don't feel like doing it, just give yourself the time and the distance to everything and then come back. Because it will come back eventually. And if you have a long period where you work really long on something and then you get this get this feeling of being exhausted, it is it is really tough when you then force yourself to draw stuff. You know, and we don't want it to become torture or anything. It's, I mean, if you write before finishing a project or something, that's something different because then it's just about finishing it. But if you not have something like that, um, it makes sense to also take a break. Also, um, I get a lot of questions on motivation and scheduling actually which is funny because i always felt like i wasn't that good in managing myself and um, planning but it became a little bit better since since um, i'm working full time because the time frames became so little so i really had to figure ways out to do all the other stuff all the youtube and mentoring and everything um yeah, my number one advice is definitely planning ahead what you want to do every day. So knowing what you want to do tomorrow helps you automatically to mentally prepare, but also to figure out a way how to do everything. And if you have a full schedule where you have actually to sit in front of the PC all day, my number one tip is definitely going for a run in the morning because it make you make you awake it brings up the whole system you get more oxygen in your brain which helps you to be ready and also if you just it's very simple if you're going to sit all day and you're going to have a run before in the morning it's just um it it's just easier than to sit longer i basically started my day this morning at 7:30 and i went for a run and I'm working since 8.30 in the morning. So I start my day job at 8.30 and I just worked 10 hours until 6.30. I had a 30 minutes lunch break and I went to the post office, but that's everything I had at, at breaks. And I just worked through and then had some food, I had a coffee before stream and then yeah, continue with that. And it's for me totally fine. I mean, also, I already have a little bit more of capacity because I did that already and I don't do that any every day so I don't have 16 hour days every day because that's nothing you can do over a longer period but um, yeah like having certain little workouts or maybe a run in the morning helps definitely Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm 
and otherwise just writing stuff down. Write down what you want to do, write down what you want to achieve, what is your plan. You should always have a plan. And it's funny me saying that because my dad always told me when I was a kid, boy, you need to have a plan, make a plan. And I always hated that when he said that because it implements uh, work, work before the actual work. So making a plan for something. Um, but he was completely right. And somehow that stuck in my brain. Maybe because he told me that so often. <laughs> but yeah, it's really important having a plan also in life. Because then you have a direction where you want to go and you can be happy if you achieve, achieve that plan, that goal. Sometimes it goes even faster than, than you think. You never know. Oh, I haven't read the chat yet. Oh, nothing in the chat happening. <laughs> It's also weird, we have a pretty big delay on Twitch and YouTube. But yeah. Maybe next week we can, maybe if I'm able to do, we can, uh, I can show the final painting of the medieval town environment we did, or we finish it on the stream. Again, I changed a lot already because it was way too busy and also changed the perspective a little bit. Also got a good feedback, which helped. Is the background actually white? No, it's gray. I wonder how it would look if I would paint white under the figure. If that would be too contrasty.
How I structure my task? Um, do you mean on learning, what? Or do you mean on work? Or do you mean um, daily?
Jeremy, you wanna plan my day? Um, I would say uh, I prioritize so stuff which definitely need, needs to get done on the next day or on the upcoming day. Um, I I schedule that first. Also, I schedule wise in terms of um, complexity. So if I have two things which I definitely have to get done on the next day, I'm um, just try to think which is more complex, which is less complex. And if I start with some something, I usually start with the easier task just to boost my confidence. And also to when you start working, I feel like it's better to start with something simple than jump right into something super complex uh, because it's for your brain. It's like you have this like uh, this this amount of time which you have to get uh, ready for stuff. That's that's how I would do it. Yeah, and then just schedule stuff which needs to get done. And um, I need to say that works very well for me. So if I have stuff which needs to get done, I get it done usually. And if stuff which can get pushed the next day and if I'm not making it, it's I just push it. And my goal, what I learned <clears throat> or not goal, what I what I learned for myself, which how I work best is I I try to do stuff every day a little bit because like everyone everyone is different you know and I'm also just a human being and I also have bad days so I just try to progress every day a little bit and if it's just doing small stuff I'm trying to to do just a little bit you know if I work on a project and I just do a little bit of research I did at least a little bit of research that's how I do that um, yeah, and I try to be realistic to be honest. I try not to over overestimate my capacities and I feel like also if you run into a lot of roadblocks in terms of working then you start also seeing how you behave and how you react to certain stuff. But what is funny and what I also learned on my first studio job is that how it actually is when you when you think you you're not gonna make it and you just push through you are always gonna make it it's so crazy i don't know if it, what what that actually is and why is that but i never had it that i didn't made it somehow i mean of course there's there can happen stuff on a job that i don't know you get sick or everything and things you don't can control but generally um yeah no, I don't have a public holiday tomorrow. Um, you mean Frohn Leichnam? No, I don't have that. Do you, Mira? Do you have free tomorrow? In Hesse, in Hesse haben sie frei. Ich glaub's ja nicht. That's nice, so enjoy your free day, Mira. I'm not jealous. <laughs> no, uh, we had so much public holidays the last couple of weeks.
Jo, welcome, Ward. Yeah, I also don't mind working. I just love working. But this can also become a problem sometimes. Not taking too enough breaks. Anyone plan some vacations? And if so, where you are going? Some recommendations, I'm open. Thanks, Hakim. Yeah, I think also we should move on now. I mean, there's still always stuff which I could do, but we have almost two, two and a half hours already. So I think it's okay for a study. I'm just, I'm just worried. I did, I overdid it a little bit in terms of brightness here. And I focused really a lot on the rendering this time. Not so much about drawing the structure, but that's also gonna, going to be interesting when I do that now from imagination. Because it's going to be very difficult, I think. Accidentally moved to stream layer. <clears throat> okay, maybe let's just push the drawing of the silhouette just a little bit more and then so it fades out so it looks like a nice drawing. And then I also have something for the stream cover. <laughs> and then we do the stuff from imagination. Dun, 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 dun. Where is my layer? Let's let me actually try something. I actually wanted to render that calf and that back leg because it looks so so nice. I haven't proceeded on that. Uh, maybe I do that after stream. But let me try something here. Dun, 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 dun. I wonder how it look if we tone down the background a little bit. Ah yeah, then we also need to, then we also need to Silhouette out the figure. Um, boom, boom, boom. How would that look? Ah, oh, no, forget it. All right. Let's just push the silhouette quickly and then do the other stuff. I just want that it's at least 
um, visible the silhouette and then it's going to fade out. So it looks a little bit more traditional. Oh, I still to break the brush. Okay, that's good. So just indicating the stuff here like he did. Also convey a little bit of movement.
All right. <clears throat> I think it's okay. Not so happy about the lag, but I would basically start to <laughs> copy it now one to one. Things like also I don't want to stop, it's just like so much fun, but there's so much little nuances in there. Like the longer you look at it, you more the more stuff you see. Oh dun 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 Alright, okay, I need to stop now, otherwise I I will not. Okay, um, oh, what's that? stuff to do <sighs> what did I get myself into huh it's so addictive right if I get into that mode I'm just drawing until I can't open my eyes anymore And the fact that I drew all day already is actually very funny. I said all right already 20 times. I know. I'm just. I just need to stop. Okay. All right. <laughs> I said it again. Okay. Let's save that boy. Dun 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 dun. dun. So, what do you actually want to do? First of all, you don't want to spend. I mean, you can. It depends on what you study, but. Um, Usually you don't want to, if you want to study a pose, for example, you usually wouldn't spend two hours um, like drawing the pose and then also rendering it because if the intention to, to learn that is um, just the pure pose, it doesn't make so much sense because it can happen that you start to forget the stuff. So the good thing if you know that you are about to do that thing again from imagination is that you're really focusing or you really try to very hard to focus on 
saving that in your head. Um, but now we spent two and a half hours or almost three hours on, on, um, on rendering it. We will try to do that in, let's say, try to do it in 20 minutes from imagination. And let's see how close I come. So let me close everything here. So I don't see that anymore. So that's the study. Make it red. Yes, okay, it's the study. And of course we also need to close all the reference. Refs. All right. So let's see if I actually remember anything or not. So first of all, think about the motion. So the motion was leaning forward. Then there was the leg we didn't drew. We had the compression. Then we had the arm going backwards and coming a little bit at us. We also give that a cylinder because it makes more sense to give it a, a direct form. Then of course we had this super strong gluteus. The face was looking in that direction here. You could actually see the ear. We had movement in the in the hair. He had a super strong lower back. Also for me it's really important proportion because if you do that from imagination like hitting the proportion correctly is very important. Also, you, we could see the delta, delta it here. So it came out a little bit. And here you also really you you test and double check your knowledge of anatomy. So in the pose, the biceps came out here. And in the style of Da Vinci, it was double curvy so we had c curve coming from here and from here then we had a straight then we had that fist um, then we had that straight leg here Ah, oh, damn it! How was it with the, how was it with the back leg? I think it was almost straight. the arm I had when the arm went forward so he I think he holds a shield or something right oh now my laptop is lagging or what are you serious uh, perfect timing come on and oh it goes down okay good all right so then the arm oops we had the arm, the arm went 
forward. And how was... Actually, I focused so much on the on the painting that I don't really remember the pose. I think it was like... Was it like that? That's very funny that I'm doing that now. I think he had something like a shield, right? In the reference. And the, ha and the hand there, I think there should be a hand, but... Ah, yeah. No, I remember. I remember. Um, so there was actually the elbow showing here. Like this. And then there should be some sort of hand here, but it wasn't shown in this drawing. Okay. So then we definitely going to have to deltoid. And he used a lot of straight lines for the deltoid. Then we had an overlap here with the trapezius and the neck. So there was trapezius and the neck. And I think the head was a little bit higher up also. Whoop. So we had more of a chin we could see. Boom, boom, boom. Here was the hair. And then we had this strong contraction. So we had a very strong... We had the shoulder blades press against each other. He had the super developed back. And this super crazy um, rib cage, which came out was definitely unnatural looking. I think also the angle here of the arm was a little bit more like this downwards and the arm was thicker mm -hmm. so then we had this huge gluteus maximus and that was the angle something like that So the leg basically went here in that direction. And here we had the the leg which went backwards. These beautiful calves, they were very strong. And on the drawing here, actually had a very huge kneecap, but I didn't draw that big. Oh, but first, I need to I need to get the anatomy right here. That looks freaking weird. Was it like that? Was it tilted in that direction? And then like this? I 
I, sh I probably shouldn't focus so much on the rendering. Focus more on the pose. I completely forgot about the pose. How much time do I have? Yeah, <laughs> I I actually just rendered the last couple of hours. So the pose was basically just 30 minutes before. Um, that's why I have no trouble remembering the, pro the pose properly, but um, yeah. Maybe not so smart from my side this time, but I have to learn out of that, right? And completely, it's it's like my brain completely went off with that. So the leg was pretty close to the other leg, also went backwards. But I completely forgot how that was here. The glute were so prominent that I totally forgot if which direction it was tilted. I believe actually it was tilted in the other direction. Was it like that? But you see, it's like I have to think really hardly about that. And I mean, obviously I did one big thing wrong, which is we, I, I rendered it, I rendered a thing to death <laughs> and not focusing too much on the pose. And now that we do the pose again, So I'm just trying, I just, I'm just doing like I would do it. And I hope it is right. So I would make the arm bigger. Then here the overlap, triceps. Then the delt. I just have to do it like I would do it now because otherwise I, the whole figure would look super weird. Also try to remember the contraction so much that I and focus on the other stuff. Ah, yeah, and I think there was something like a flow going here through, right? Yes. Yeah, I think something like that. And then like the, the gluteus had like a strange double, or not strange, but a very strong double muscle here. like. And then we had the leg here. Ah, oh, yeah, something like that. And maybe I put the leg here a bit too much in the front, so. So more like that. 
yeah I had I had to focus a little bit more now on how I would do it so it makes a little bit more sense now okay okay boom 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 so that was almost straight here then we had then we had the kneecap we had the huge calves here the quadriceps biceps was stronger I had a very strong overlap here this was separated this went up here And actually, the calf needs to be higher. Um, what kind of memor memorizing tricks I use? Um, just, yeah, that's the thing, you know, when it comes to anatomy, I try to s remember it in base geometric forms. That helps a lot. And gesture, like just base forms of a gesture. And uh, that's mostly it, to be honest. Mm. Do you repeat this practice with one study afterwards? Like now, for example, you can't remember it clearly. Do you try to get it right on the second attempt or do you just start a new one? Uh, no, you're not confusing. I totally understand what you mean. Um, so, like, n now, technically, I'm pushing through. So, I start to rem remember this stuff now. Um, but if you would do that first, like, if it's your first time and you have really trouble on doing it, you should go back to you, your reference and do the study again. But you can technically do the study way quicker. And again, like I, I did something here wrong here and I want you to keep that in mind if you try that. I, I basically um, did not drew the pose and then try to copy the pose in my head. I spent two hours of painting that thing. So <laughs> um, that wasn't so smart because it basically, um, I basically co complete, uh, forgot about the position, everything and focus so much on light and shades and everything. So when you do that, try not to do it like I did. Try really to do a drawing, a quick post sketch of the study, put it away and try to remember it. And actually the first couple couple studies are very hard in the beginning, but when you do it again and again and again, um, it goes easier and easier. Also in terms of remember technique, it really depends on the subject, you know, if it's what I like to do also is um, before I do that also, I take a reference and I don't copy the reference like it is. I turn the reference. So while I study it, I turn it. Um, so let's say it's the, the thing we studied before, the back pose. I would just try to turn the whole pose, uh, the whole pose sideways or maybe frontal, you know? Um, that's really hard if you don't know the subject well. So then I would just start to do that in basic blocks. Like Kim Jong ji is doing it, you know, like just using wireframes, boxes and everything, and then try to um, try to basically turn the box because it's easier. You, you have to only think in planes then, and that's just easier to process for you. That's why it's important that you start learning um, cylinders, boxes, spheres and everything in the beginning so you can break everything down Because here basically the the arm is just a sphere so I'm just remembering okay the sphere is going here 
And always, like, if you start with anatomy, and, um, and because anatomy is really, really hard also to remember, like, and drawing it from imagination, like, drawing it without reference, like, if you would do it on a job, usually, like, every artist is just um, using references, which makes total sense because sometimes you can't remember stuff. And also, like, the human body changes completely when it um, switches the pose. Um, that's why it's so important um, to use reference, but when you when you start to study that, um, break it down very simply. And you see that like this exercise is really hard, like really hard to do. Um, but if you do that often, um, it, it become easier and easier. I did that with faces a lot. So I was basically just drawing faces from imagination and then, and uh, not from imagination, from reference, and then drawing them from imagination. And sometimes just doing quick poses helps really. And the thing is also don't don't feel forced to remember everything. If you just learn one thing or remember one one little thing, that's already good. Then you already learned something. So, I mean, here I'm I'm just a little bit confused because um, obviously in the drawing he had this over exaggerated, this over exaggerated uh, chest. And I focus really a lot about on this trapezius compression. And I think his shoulder were also way wider. Like I tend to make my poses also very narrow. And this is also be wider and this goes down. That's why it's good if you imagine the if you imagine the the gesture line like going like this you know if you, if you do that that it already it's already helpful to remember the pose But I need to admit I didn't focus too much on that, so <laughs> it's maybe also the it's 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 the time of day. I know excuses are like assholes, everyone has one. What I really wanted to save was the kind type of proportion he was using. I remember there must be a hand here or something, but he didn't show the hand. Let me flip that thing. Oh yeah, that looks weird, yeah. That needs to be up.
Ah yeah, and then he had this this thing from the traps coming out here. And to show that it was the trap contraction. Let's maybe draw some contour lines here. And here it was. It was a very strong overlap. This huge glute constantly confuses me. Was it like that? I'm really curious to see the, the reference afterwards. Because I believed like the gesture was going like this. And the, the other leg went forward. How much time I have? 10 more minutes, okay. But the proportion is still wrong here. like the head was also more sideways like this and he was lifting the shoulder so the traps technically would come up a little bit more here yeah something that more like this so then this came up, here was the contraction. So everything got compressed here. It became very dark. Here was also, um, this went out even more. I think the arm was also further away from the body. Also the proportion still, like the upper body looks too small. And the head also looks a little bit, needs to be a bit more up. And you see it's just like, um, Constantly trying to figure out to remembering But the better you remember now like the better it became um, When you draw the same thing tomorrow again, so what I would do I would do that here Then I would go to bed and then next day in the morning. I would try to draw it again from imagination and I mean, I don't say you need to, you need to become the master of imagination or something. Definitely not. You can completely work your whole artistic life with reference. You should, which is also you, what you should do. You always should work with reference. I'm just saying like, it's a great practice on re really, really try to focus on your, on your study. What are you, what are you, what are you studying, you know? Because you, you you could see, like, I got also distracted by by the beautiful drawing of Da Vinci and I wanted to paint it and then I completely forgot to focus about proportion and um, ratio, how everything, how we decided to, how big the quad actually was. 
and it's just a super honest exercise. And it, show, it shows you direct, directly of if you paid attention or not. And don't get, uh, don't get, um, don't get depressed or anything. Just do it again. So the cheeks should sit more in the middle. I'm so I'm so curious to see how how the glutes actually were. <laughs> Cause I have so it's such a different different thing in my head right now. Oh that looks still not correct. How much time? Six more minutes. Damn. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Oh, we had a, a stone house. I didn't have any time to look at that, Hakim. Hey, Brain at Starcraft, how's it going? Yeah, a positive mindset is uh, crucial. It's also hard if you isolate it. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um... So you can see still the drawing? Yes, okay. I accidentally pulled it out, out of this Photoshop. Okay, um... very strong lower back muscles Okay, I have four more minutes. Let's. I think the the pose is still not correct, but let's quickly block in. Just, uh, just quickly block in the values to see if we actually save the the light direction and the way the um, the light was dropping. Ah, oh, come on. Great that my laptop is lagging now. Come on. I think the front arm was also a little bit bigger. Like he had really strong arms. Ah, damn it. I should have paid more attention to that. Okay. Also, I think the arm was more straight here. But you can see there's here, there's really no, no way of fooling yourself. It's like completely, completely truthful exercise. Oh, 
All right, let's try it. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. What can I take quickly for that? Let's just... Okay, so we had a lot of light happening. Let's do it as, as rough and fast as possible. So there was definitely shadow here. There was a little bit of... Sh now it is lagging. Come on, boy. Don't lag. So we had light over here. This was just pure, it wasn't rendered. So we had this, then we had a very dark spot here. Then we had shadows here, definitely here we had a lot of contact shadows. Um, then we had all this juiciness here going on. And come on, come on, come on, come on, don't lag. And then like the most light part we had here on this side. So we had a little bit of, we had a bit of light, like the, the, the face was pretty bright. So that turned away. Then this should be, should be here. Ah oh, yeah, and here was also, this was also in shadow. There we just had couple then we just had a couple, 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 not cup of coffee. Then we had a um, couple light shapes here. How much time I have? Oh, one minute. Oh, damn it. Um, so I think that was in shadow here. Also, that whole part here was in shadow, 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 shadow. Then also the lower part of the leg was also in shadow, so. So, let's. Oh, come on, now is my laptop is lagging, what the hell? You have one job, bro, one job. So we had also nice light shapes here. And we had a very strong separation here. So we had two pretty cool shapes here on the, on the quadriceps biceps. Ah, yeah, and we had a cast shadow from the butt cheeks. And we had a super muscular, super muscular gluteus here. So very strong separations. Something like that, we had this and this and this. And we had it like, this was way darker here because here was a contraction. And the backside, here was a little bit light. Also here was like, this and this and this. This wasn't actually that lit. The delt was a bit more lit. And here we had light shapes going on. How much time? Oh, it's already passed. So I just do it how I believe it was. And let's see. <laughs> 
Let's see how how bad I did it. All right, it's not perfect, but um, let's reveal the thing and let's see. Um, okay. Yeah, again, um, I just want to say, if you do uh, exercise like this, where you um, focus, where you try, where your focus is on remembering the stuff, don't do it like I did. Um, don't do two things and then just try to remember both. And then forgetting the first <laughs> thing because you spent too much time on the second one. Um, really, if you try to f remember a pose, do a pose. If you try to remember s certain rendering, do the pose before and then focus on the rendering. And then just copy the pose and then render the stuff again from imagination. Okay. Alrighty, let's see. Are you, re are you ready to reveal the thing? What are, you guys, what are you guys thinking? How close are we to the study? Give an estimate, like 10 is, 10 is close, is the closest, and zero is far away from close. Hey Arulak, uh, welcome to the stream. How's it going? Um, <laughs> you, you also cannot remember it. <laughs> um, um, Mira said seven or oh, nine. Oh, Hakim, no. I don't believe it's going to be a nine. I don't. Uh, that's also very kind from Mira. Um, Nando said it's also seven. Wow. And eight. Oh, Murat said ten. You you are way too nice. Way too nice. You believe in me? Okay. <laughs> okay. So that's the poor thing we did in f 50 minutes, and uh, that's the study. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh, it's actually not that. I thought it would be worse, to be honest. <laughs> I had such a trouble to remembering the pose. I can sw I can move it here a little bit over. But yeah, it was he was way more lean forward, and you actually couldn't see that much of his head. That's interesting. I remember it completely different. Yeah, no, of course the um like. I turned his like his hip. You we would see him way more from the back, and like the masses would completely different. I, I basically turned the thing, and he looks a little bit like a cartoony pe person when he's angry. Like I'm so angry. <laughs> like I I don't like this here. I'm gonna move away. <laughs> That's how it looks. <laughs> But yeah, um, yeah, it's 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 uh, it's not it's it's not very close. But yeah, I basically did a skinny guy. <laughs> um, what's my number? Mm, I'm very I'm very I'm very um, I'm very hard on myself. So I would give myself a three because I didn't nail the pose and. Like the masses and everything is completely off, but it's just my expectation. So again, if you um, if you do that exercise, don't don't do it on two things simultaneously. Just do it on one thing. So really, take a pose, make a fairly. I mean, it would make sense if you spent the same amount of time you do on the study from the ref as you do from practice. 
So if you take 30 minutes for the study, also take 30 minutes for the drawing from imagination. So you have the, th the same feeling. If you can do it even faster, it, it, it maybe it's, it's even better. It really depends. Also, it depends on complexity. So if you do something very complex, um, it obviously would take longer. But yeah, that's definitely uh, one of my number one favorite exercises to do. Because you learn so much. Really, you learn so much. And it doesn't matter on what topic you do it. It's always, you always learn. And you can do it also in between. You can do it as a warm up also. Um, if you want to warm up and you don't know what to do, just take an image what you like. Uh, copy it for 20 minutes and then draw it again from imagination with the intention like when you copy it have the intention of doing that um, there was also one question I didn't answer um, a common question on where do you find your motivation to work um, I would say the motivation is on one side goal setting so I always take myself goals you know like if I want to get good in a certain thing skill if I want to achieve I don't know like if I want to achieve that I gonna have a better portfolio piece or if I want to achieve getting a job or I don't know like uh, like the goals I gonna have I need to have goals to motivate myself to get to that because if I don't have any particular goal on what I want to do um, I'm just like swimming around you know like a fish in the ocean um, and to be honest also back to the running part in the morning like I get messages of my morning runs looks fun, but it's actually not fun. It's really hard and it's a fight every morning to first get out of bed early and then get out of like get out and then run on an empty stomach and try to run even faster every day. And for example, this morning I had knee pain. Um, I, I didn't felt comfortable. It was super warm. So it's a fight and I start with that in a day. But when I finished my, ru my run, mentally I'm ready and prepared for the day. And I'm like, I feel like I can achieve any anything on that day. So it's like me mental training for myself and a discipline, you know. So um, it's, it's a good day to start with a run. And um, I have energy and I feel like just, yeah, nothing can stop me today. Um, yeah, in general motivation, I would always like set yourself milestones, goals. And if you don't feel like drawing also, I get this often asked what to do if you don't feel like that. I had this so often in my uh, in my study time. Because Im imagine you start to draw every day and you do that. You start into in the beginning, like two hours is really hard for you and it's draining and it's exhausting. And then you do it again and again and again. And a certain point, you you um, you get more capacity, so you can draw even more. But then comes the point that you super exhausted because you train yourself. It's really like training, and and then you come to the point where you basically um, like you don't have an energy. You don't feel inspired. You don't feel um, you don't feel ready. You don't you don't want to draw. You don't even want to draw. The the the, the the belief or the thinking about drawing or painting just stresses you or you're like oh no not again then stop it don't do it if it's not a project or homework or something you need to finish like that's very specific you know then you just have to do it but if it's just you let's say you draw all day for class and you have the belief system you have to draw for yourself afterwards but you don't have energy don't do it because that's basically your mind and your body telling you you don't have capacities of energy and creative energy you know that's why i i couldn't i couldn't do my own work when i joined vuga for example for the first six months 
um, after work because I felt just empty. I just felt creatively empty because the work is taking energy from you. And that's completely normal. So maybe just it has really to do with your own resource management. You have to understand yourself, how you function, how, um, how you work efficiently, how you learn the best. And then try to be honest with yourself and don't don't like strangle yourself over over getting better you know because everyone thinks it's a it's a sprint versus the other artist on instagram and social media and etc but it's not because at the end if instagram is not there anymore tomorrow you know but think about that instagram is not there anymore tomorrow and there's no no art station nothing where you can look on other art what is then do you stop drawing do you stop painting no, you don't. You just stop comparing yourself and you will be way more happier and you don't stress yourself because you you accelerate in your own pace. And that's very important. Like people stress too much about other stuff. That's my take on it. Um, <laughs> if we think that you don't even remember the post when started, you did it very good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I usually only make quick pauses because practically doing this exercise looks fun too. Yes, it's, it's really fun. It's also fun. You can do it with everything, Nando. You can do it with hands, faces, um, uh, animals. It's uh, it's really, really, really fun to do. And in the beginning, it's hard. What I like also the other exercise. What I said is pretty cool to do. It's just taking the reference and turning that. So imagine the thing what we studied so um, here the reference we studied take that and try to turn that so you draw that but you don't draw it like it is you turn it like on a turntable and it's also very hard in the beginning but it's also when you do that it's very cool to do mm, how many hours a day do I draw I mean, nowadays, all day. So today I drew... Mm, so let's say I started at 9, because I had to write emails and stuff. With the stream, how long is the stream going? Three and a half hours, plus my day job. So today I drew roughly about 11 hours, I would say. Like in between 10 and 11 hours. Like I also took some breaks in between. So something in between 10 and 11 hours today. And that's like my days usually are, I at least draw eight hours a day, I would say. That doesn't mean you have to draw eight hours a day, obviously. I mean, for me, it's my job. And I mean, if I, when I studied, if I, if you have seen my video on, on my, on my story like on my past how I became an artist um, I always had to make double work so I had to do my college work and I had to draw I do my concept work because I wanted to get to into concept art and I was so focused on that that I, f I trained also myself to have more resources on drawing that's why it's I would say also easier for me to, these days to do work after work I'm just, I just trained myself three and a half years in, in college to have more resources. Um, <clears throat> on Nando's question, um, how many sequential, sequential hours do you think your creative energy lasts? At, I think that depends from person to person. I would say, do you know when you when, when you have an idea and you're very excited about that idea, it's like a curve. In the beginning, there's so much energy, you know, and it goes up, 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 up. And then like maybe after an hour or one and a half hours, it goes down because like your energy level also goes down and you also look for reference, brainstorm, sketch, whatever. It takes energy capacities. So I think breaks in between are very important. 
and I believe when I was at college I couldn't draw longer uh, at home longer than two two to three hours in, in one bit also when we went to live drawing um, we just drew like two hours made a break two hours made a break that was fine um, but these days I can the thing is it's also not healthy that I can do it but I can technically I have the problem that I don't get up anymore because I'm just constantly working I'm continuously working because I also have so much to do so I'm sometimes I sit for six hours straight I forget everything drinking eating toilet it's just I'm just working through because I'm so focused um, yeah but to come back to a question it really depends from person to person and I think it depends also on what you do uh, you're welcome our luck I'm happy the stream is interesting I feel like um, um, I like I I'm always open to your feedback of, of you uh, guys and girls so if you like the stream or if you don't like the stream um, feel free also to write a comment below and let me know if we should do something else on the next one because it's a weekly stream right so we have it once a week and I don't want to do the same stuff all over but I felt I felt it's maybe interesting to talk about that exercise today that was actually the goal today but like rendering the guy on the right took way too long um, Okay, let me read the other questions. Um, do I have any other passions? Yes, of course. Um, I would say, and don't get a wrong image of that, but I love bodybuilding, like muscle training. Um, just because also about my American football background, I trained a lot and I'm actually not so passionate about American football anymore, but I love like bodybuilding, like how, how they sculpt their bodies. Um, nutrition, chemical processes in the in the in the body. I'm also very interested about. Um, I love reading, reading. Yeah, and games. But funny, I don't play any games. Like for, I don't know, for the last one and a half years, I did, haven't played anything really. I just played Gothic Two again when I was sick and a little bit of Skyrim but that's it <laughs> thank you Nando <laughs> Hakim yeah you shouldn't you shouldn't uh, do that in the morning <laughs> but it's great that you live in the mountains I love that Oh, that's nice, Mira. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Like drinking enough is really, really tricky. All right, everyone. Um, if there are no any further questions, um, I would think I would end the stream um, because we almost have four hours in on the stream. Um, which I also didn't expect it. So uh, Thanks everyone for joining. Um, it's always a pleasure. I hope you could take something out of the stream tonight um, I hope you could draw along or you could um, chill or just listen and um, I don't know just chill um, Yeah, thanks for everyone who joined um, I hope it was interesting, you learned something and we will have an next stream next week on Wednesday as every stream. Feel free to join our art community on Discord, um, it's in a banner. Also um, if you want to support the stream or the video production, feel free to share my videos with your friends if you feel like they, it's maybe interesting for them, so it helps to push the channel. Otherwise I wish you all a wonderful day, morning, night, wherever you are and hopefully we see each other on the next stream and I wish you all a wonderful rest week all right okay have a good one everyone ciao ciao